four years ago when we first met our next guests, Connie Yates and Chris Gard. They were living through every parent's worst nightmare. Well, their story drew attention around the world and was one that we followed here on This Morning from the beginning. And we're delighted that Connie and Chris can join us now. And good morning. <gasps> <gasps> there oh, you go. The family. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hello. Congratulations. <laughs> So this is baby Ollie. He's a bit miserable, sorry. Oh, don't oh, we worry. We don't mind at all. Congratulations. He is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Uh, Connie, how, how are you doing? How are you feeling? He, he didn't sleep very well last night. I bet none of you did, really. <laughs> did you? No. <laughs> well, we don't you care, you know. It's, um, we're really well. Yeah, we are on cloud nine. Um, you know, I know I spoke to you, Phil, last time about I was worried that after Charlie, I couldn't imagine myself ever loving a baby like him. And I know you, you took me to one side off air and said, you know, don't worry, you'll feel it. And um, you were bang on the money, mate, because the minute I saw him again, you know, watching the child being born is just so beautiful. And he has, you know, lit up our lives like you wouldn't believe. He's um, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and, and Connie, I mean, you say that you don't, you don't mind the cries and the sleepless nights because all of those things you absolutely do not take for granted this time. Exactly, yeah. I am quite tired, don't get me wrong, but, yeah, <laughs> but yeah it's worth every second. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, with another baby, there, is, there was that chance um, that, uh, that he, uh, Ollie could be born with the same condition. How, how worried were you about that? Uh, really worried at first. Um, we were quite lucky that we found out that 11 weeks pregnant that he was healthy. Um, but those 11 weeks seemed to feel like months at the time. Um, but, but, yeah. But luckily, the, the hospital, we was at Queen Charlotte's in Hammersmith, and from you know, the minute we got a positive pregnancy test through to the genetic results, through reassurance scan, they were fantastic. So they kept us reassured the whole time. Yeah. Um, and, you know... A fantastic birth and it's just been yeah we've been just so lucky you know we feel so so lucky and uh, i mean a pregnancy the, you know the odds were in our favor yeah. yeah yeah no exactly and thank god and look at him i mean he's just gorgeous um a pregnancy is, is a difficult time anyway i mean you're you're worried you're nervous your body's changing things are different Having all of that with your history anyway, but also during a global pandemic, what what was that like, Connie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't the easiest. I mean, there's you know most of the appointments were cancelled, and um, Chris wasn't able to come to the like, twenty week scan with me and stuff. And obviously, it can be quite scary. You know, that's when they check everything to do with the baby. And um, you know, I thought if there was anything wrong, then I'd be on my own, and he wouldn't be there to support me. Yeah. Um, so I think it was extra scary just because of what we've been through. Um, can you hear me all right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine, don't worry. It's, it's gra it's it's grandma, I think grandma's good. there, isn't she? He's just making himself known. Yeah, yeah. shall we pass him over? It's you can. Yeah. It's it's okay. Okay. Yeah. We don't mind at all. That makes no odds to Are us. Are you going to go and see grandma? <laughs> Makes, oh, oh, I want to fill that hug. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the nicest. <laughs> and so the timing of Ollie's arrival was also extraordinary, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I went into labour on Charlie's birthday. Um, I wasn't due until the 18th of August, but um, yeah, I went into labour on the 4th, which is Charlie's. It was around about 10 a.m. when it and Charlie was born on the 4th at 9:44, and her contractions started around the same time for Ollie on his birthday. So it's almost like you know he didn't want to share his birthday uh, with Ollie, so they both get their own day. You know. Yeah, it's nice that they've got separate birthdays. It's just one day apart. Yeah, yeah. but there's something quite magical about that, isn't it? That your contraction started on that day, around about that time. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. quite strange. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually with Charlie at the time, weren't we? We yeah. were actually visiting Charlie at the time, with his forever bed, as we call it, and, and that's when she got her first contraction. So, yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, it's um, all well to worked out lovely. You know, it was, it's hard because when we lost Charlie, it felt like we kind of, a part of us went with him, you know, um, and we could never imagine ourselves smiling again. Um, and, you know, he will never replace Charlie. Um, Charlie will always be in our hearts and he'll always be our firstborn. But Ollie has lit up our lives like you wouldn't believe. And we, we feel kind of privileged, you know, because, which may sound weird, is we've lost a child, but, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And we, every smile, every, you know, noise he makes is just, we, it's so precious to us and we don't take anything for granted and we're just enjoying every second. Even we? dirty nappies. Even dirty, Even dirty nappies. <laughs> you said something a moment ago then uh, that I thought was 
particularly beautiful. Um, and uh, um, we would say that you were at Charlie's graveside, but you call it his forever bed. Yeah, it's just, it's, you know, grave always sounds a bit grave, grave. if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, so we just call it his forever bed because, and we're actually going to be buried in there when it's our time as well to come because we've dug, you know, a few down. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where he is. We visit him every day um, and, you know, we've got to take Ollie there still. But, um, yeah, we're just, just so in love and, um, you know, we'll, we'll always miss Charlie. He'll never... You know, we, the, car, the thank you cards we're writing out, still, it's still Chris, Connie, Charlie and Oliver. You know, he'll always be a part of our lives. Um, and I'm sure he'll be very proud of his little brother, as, as his little brother will be proud of him. And I think that's really important, isn't it, as well, Ollie growing up, to, to always know about Charlie and to keep that memory alive and for you guys to keep, keep talking about him so that, that he's, he's remembered. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean... It's important for us that, you know, Ollie knows that he's his own person, that you know, that he's not a replacement for Charlie or anything like that, that he probably would have been here anyway because we probably would have wanted another child by now. <laughs> um, and, but, yeah, always know about his big brother and but, try and... You know, when the time's right, we'll obviously tell him all about Charlie, um, but I'm sure when, you know, as Ollie goes older, he'll be doing all he can to raise money and to raise awareness of the disease that took his big brother. Well, that was um, what, so he'll uh, be doing all he can for the Charlie Gar Foundation. That was going to be my final question to you because we talked a lot about the foundation, the Charlie Gar Foundation, which you set up, mm. and of course, then we've all gone through the madness that we've all gone through. So that will have certainly stopped a lot of your fundraising, and you you are working for other families mm. and to raise money for other families so they don't hopefully go through the same sort of thing mm -hmm. that you went through. How is the foundation? Are you still managing to keep the head above the water? Yeah, well, we've had to cancel, obviously, a lot of fundraising events because we had a lot of, you know, skydives and, and uh, runs and stuff booked. I'm and quite glad he's not jumping out of a plane, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, so am I, to be fair. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, we've had to cancel a lot of things, as, as I'm sure a lot of other charities have done. So it's been tough. Um, but, you know, we'll crack on, you know... Uh, it's important to us that just because we've now got a, a healthy child, you know, it doesn't mean that our work in raising awareness and funds for mitochondrial disease stops. It's still very much our focus, as, as is Charlie's Law. Um, it's just we've got, you know, an added bonus of having Ollie here as well, and he, he kind of keeps us going. Well, well, thank you for sharing with us today. We're it was so happy to meet you. Him. We really are. He's gorgeous. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank, thank you to as well, and, and thank the rest of your team because um, you. you know our first ever appearance live on TV was on the sofa with you guys, and it feels like you've been on the journey with us the whole time. And I just want to thank you and your team. You've always been so lovely to us when we come, and we're gutted that we couldn't have bring him uh, bring him in to meet you personally. Well, there's always another time yeah, when time. all this is over. Time. Bring him in. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll find here. another excuse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs>